Hello, welcome back to the channel. And now in today's video, we're going to be expanding on the video we made before on using Firebase in a Chrome extension. And in this video, we're going to show how you can use the Firestore database inside your Chrome extension. Now to start, you just need to go to the Firebase console and create a new project like this. So for this, we'll call it Firestore example and create our project. This will take a moment to load and then it will give us the um, API keys and information we need to use this. Then we can go into our project by clicking continue. Then you click onto web and then add a nickname. So again, we'll say Firestore example. We don't need any Firebase hosting and then we can register our app and then you'll be shown this page just here. Now this is all of the API keys we need to connect this to our Chrome extension. So you want to copy this now, and then we're going to go across into Atom or any code editor that you'd like to use. Okay, so I'm inside Atom now in a new folder here called Chrome extension Firebase. Now I've made a number of files already. So I have the manifest.json, which looks like this. I have a background.html page, which is where I'm going to be um, adding the first part of the code we just copied. And then I have an app.js, which we'll be using just to test that we're getting the information to and from the database. And then finally, we have a firebase.js. Now we'll go through each of these files separately, starting with our manifest file. Now this file basically connects everything up to Firebase. We explained this in the previous video. So you need to make sure that you have this content security policy attribute down here, and this needs to be um, exactly as this one is here so that it can connect to the database from your extension, otherwise it will be blocked. And then down here, we just have our app.js, which is called in. We don't need this CSS. And this just allows our app to be run. And then we have our background page here. You can see a link in the description of this video, which will take you to a GitHub repository with all of these um, files. So you can take a closer look there. So as we mentioned, in our background.html, we need to paste in the first part of the um, code we are given just here. So you see this first script tag. We need to paste that in at the top. And now because in this video, we're going to be using Firestore instead of the Firebase database, we can remove these items just here like that. And then if you check on the um, Firebase docs, you can find the most up-to-date information. So you can see here, you go on firebase.google.com forward slash docs, forward slash firestore, forward slash quick start. Now, all you need from this page is this element at the top here. So if you click on the web tab, this will give you the paths that you need to start using Firestore. So we'll just copy this second one just here and then paste. And this will make sure that we have all of the um, development SDKs that you need to interact with Firebase and specifically Firestore. So then you just need to save the changes on your background.html. Okay, so next we need to go to our firebase.js page. Now the first thing we need to paste in here is the API details from the first page here. So we wanna copy all of this information just here. And this will go right at the top of the page. So if you're copying this from the GitHub repository, make sure that you delete any um, at the top here and add your own. So make sure you paste that into the page. Then save. So after you've pasted this in, you've successfully connected your Firebase database, your Firestore to your Chrome extension. So if we save this now and we go into Chrome and actually run this extension, you should be able to see in the console log the information from Firebase just here. So if we go back to our background.html, when this is opened in the page, it will run these files. So it will first connect to the Firebase app. It will add in the Firebase Firestore, and then it will connect our firebase.js page. When that runs, it will use all of our config information that we've pasted in, initialize the um, Firebase app using our config information, and then it will show this log onto the page. To check that this is all happening correctly, we're going to go into our list of extensions and find our new extension. Okay, so once you've loaded the unpacked extension, you wanna find the folder that you've made this um, inside. So for my example here, it's Chrome extension Firebase. I then load it up 
And then if we click on this inspect views um, link just here, it will open a new window. And then we just want to click onto the console tab and we can see the object here, which is shown from our firebase.js page. So we can see here is the console log that we mentioned a minute ago. And here's all the information coming from Firebase that shows that we've successfully connected this to our extension. So in the next step, we're going to use some code from the example Firestore docs to push information into the Firestore database. And then we'll um, pull this from the database and see if we can get this to show on a normal web page to show that we can pull data in from Firestore and show this in our extension. So you want to go to this page in the um, docs of Firestore. I will add a link to this in the description. Now this is the example um, code, code that they show that lets you add information into a new collection here in the Firestore database. So if you copy all of this and open your firebase.js page, just paste it at the top here. Just make sure that before you run this, you set this DB variable just here, which is equal to firebase.firestore, which essentially connects you to the Firestore um, parts of this Firebase um, SDK. So if we save this now and go back and run, we need to first make sure that we've set up our database. So if you click start in test mode after going to the console and then database, click start in test mode and then next, it then asks you to set a location. This doesn't make too much difference. Just make sure you set something that's either near to where you're located or near to where your users will be. So I'm just going to select this same uh, default option and click done. And this will just make sure that your database is set up. And then for this example, we want to create a new collection just here called cities. Then click next. We want to click auto ID. We're going to say test and then test value just to save. We can now see that we have this cities collection. And if you click on it, it shows that the auto ID um, attribute just there and then our test value. But if we go back to our atom file just here, we can see that what we're trying to do in the code is use this cities collection that we just made, set a new document in this called LA and then set some example um, details into this. So it will fill this with um, some new data. So I want to save this, reload our extension, and then check the background.html console log again. So we're going to click refresh, and then click on our background.html. And then we can see here it says document successfully written. So if we check in our Firestore database again, we can see there's the LA part of the document, and there's all of the data that we set in the code. So now if we go back to our Atom file and remove this, because we don't want this to run every time, or you can comment this out. This shows you how you can submit data to your database inside a Chrome extension. But ideally, you would make sure that this is set inside an event listener here. But we'll show an example of that in a moment. So what we want to do next is make sure that our extension is running on every page. So if we just go to a random uh, web address, and if we check the console, we want to find out how we can pull this information that we've just set here. So the uh, details for this LA document in the cities uh, collection. And we want to be able to submit, show this in the console log on a random website. So first we need to work out how we can pull this information from our uh, database inside our Chrome extension. So as of our previous example, where we were submitting data into the database, the Firestore docs has some great example um, use cases and code that you can use. So again, we're going to copy this and use this in our Chrome extension so you can see it in action. So down here, we want to look at the Chrome runtime function. So we'll explain exactly what this does in a moment. But first, we're going to post this. We're going to paste this code that we've just copied inside this fetch um, statement here, inside this if statement for fetch. So we can see that this code here is again calling the um, db variable just here, which we set, we need to make sure actually that that part isn't commented out, that we set up here. And it's going to then look for the collection of cities. And we want to look for the document of LA. And then down here, if it finds any information, it's going to log it to the console. But we don't want to do that just yet. We want to submit it back to our app.js page. So for now, we're going to take this part out just here. 
and comment this out. So we can use this in a minute. And the same thing down here, we know that there's no um, information returned. So this is going to be our message and the same for this part down here. And there's our variable we want to send. Instead of just logging this to the console like we were doing before, we need to create a separate function called response, or as we've set up here, it will be shortened to just RESP. Now here we can set a type. So here we're going to say result. And because we managed to find data this time, we're going to say success. Now in the previous um, video we made, we were fetching from the Firebase database, which sends uh, data back to us in this snapshot object just here. But because we're using the Firestore, we're going to change this now to data and the uh, doc object, which is set just here. Now this will make sure that this is actually sent back to our app.js. So we'll show a clear example of how this works in a moment, but now we're just going to set a error message in, in case no data can be found. So again, we want to paste this same information, but instead of the status here of being a success, it's gonna say error. The only data being passed back will be this error message just here. So we change it from this object into a string. And the same down here, we will say um, error, and then we'll just pass through the error message that the code has just there. So again, we're going to save. And now we're just going to go through exactly how the extension is making these calls to the database from app.js. So if we go to our app.js just here, we can see we're again calling the Chrome runtime. Now the Chrome runtime essentially lets you send messages and send bits of data to and from different files in your extension. So in this example, we're making this send message function to our background.html page, which subsequently is sent to our firebase.js page just here. We're sending this object through to our firebase.js page. Now we're setting a command just here of fetch. Now you can also set in any data that you want to send. So this could be a user ID, um, for example, you know, a number like, like this, or it could be a string of their user ID. Um, so you could interact with the database with this information. But for now, we don't need to send any data through, so we can just remove this part of the object as well. So it's just going to send this command that will say fetch. So you can have as many different types of commands as you want. And then it listens for a response. And then when it gets a response, it will call a show data function just here with the data, and then it will just log it to the page. So this is what the actual Chrome extension will find on the actual um, interface side. So the user can use this information. So if we go to a website, because this Chrome extension can run on any URL just here, we should be able to see this um, information on the console of every single website. So we'll just add a message just here that says from extension. So we know exactly what this console log is um, referring to. So if we now look at our firebase.js page, we can see down here we have the Chrome runtime uh, functions again, but instead of saying send message, we're saying on message, so we're listening for any messages that have been sent, and we're adding an event listener just here, which is accepting these parameters just here. So in our message function, this is where we would have the, um, the command and any data that was sent. So for example, we can see we're using message.command, and we can access this uh, variable just here, but if we had sent in data as well, we could then find this would be equal to any objects that we sent through. So for example, the user ID if it was just a string, or we could have an, a set of objects or an array or any information that you need that helps you make your calls to your Firestore. So we'll get rid of this for now. So this is where we're now gonna be running the call to our database and then sending it back. You can see here, this is where we set our response function and we can then send this um, back to our app.js. So if we run this now, we should be able to see the information from our database displayed on any um, web address that we go on with this from extension uh, text showed beforehand. So we just go back to our extension, we're going to refresh, and then we'll just go to a random website and see what we find. So we're on Google, we'll inspect, go to the console, and we can see we have this from extension message just here. If we open up this object, we can find 
the uh, data from our database, which we set earlier, shown back to us. Now, if we were to go in here and edit this information, like this, and then refresh our page, we can see that this is updated with the new information. So it updates very quickly from our database. So you can now start to see how you can build Chrome extensions that can interact with your database and send information backwards and forwards from your extension. Now, just before we finish this video, if we wanted to send um, data to our database from our extension, so if we were to send another um, event up here, so if we just copy and paste this, and change our command to post, and we're going to set some data just here, and we're gonna set a string. So this will just be a random um, word, so let's call it um, test data. So we're sending this as a string, but it could be an object or an array like we mentioned before. And we're gonna save, and then if we go back to our firebase.js and create a new if statement up here, which says message command equals post, we can now um, push this information to our collection. So if we go up here and copy this code that we used earlier, and we're going to change this to another um, document, we'll call it test doc, and we're just gonna say data will be equal to message.data. If we save this now and run it again, refresh our extension, refresh our page, we won't see any message set just here because there isn't a response coming back. But if we check our database, we can see we have this new test doc down here with the test data that we sent from our database. Now this shows how you can send data to the database and get data back to your extension and how you can display this in the console log and also in your actual page as well. So if you've got any questions about this, let me know in the comments. In the next couple of weeks, I'll be making a further video on how you can use uh, Chrome extensions and with a bit more of a detailed example on how you can set this up um, using Firestore and Firebase as the database for this. So thanks for watching, I hope you found this useful.